Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Gotham Manhattan Metropolis. Uh, today we are going to be doing some underwater building. I got, uh, I got a whole table set aside of uh, materials to work with and things to start on. Uh, but first, uh, because we're we're doing all this uh, underwater mission gas and moving things around and whatnot, I had to uh, also work on the Wayne Manor a little bit. So that's changed the lagoon area that's been over there. Uh, so I thought, you know, it's a good time to revisit the lighthouse and do something there because I, I did a little color swapping and part swapping for some other stuff I was working on. Uh, so I needed to, you know, kind of unify that, bring it all back together. So here's what I got. And what we're talking about here is essentially, uh, two lighthouse of darkness sets, uh, for, sorry about the squeak chair, uh, for, uh, uh, the hidden side. And I, I, I still have some more work to do here up front, and I'll show you uh, what I'm working on there in a second. But just uh, something I, I did some uh, large uh, rock pieces and some small rock pieces and uh, a couple bits here left over from an older Indiana Jones set. It was the uh, uh, it was the one with the rolling boulder in it. Uh, it was from way back. But I've had those for a while and haven't had a real good place to put it, but put them there, it kind of looks okay. Uh, and then instead of just the one dock uh, on one side, I have a dock on each side now so that if I need to, I can put this in the middle of something. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we can have uh, a couple different vessels docking on here. Hopefully I don't, uh, you know, drop this because that would be bad. Aubrey, what's going on, yo? Oh, I owe you a chai chai uh, because because I, I misrepresented and I said it was Glenn that came up with the... Uh, started talking about TT, but it was it was Aubrey that started talking about TT. Uh, so if you're not not aware about uh, chai, uh, chai tea and chai tea lattes, things of that nature, well, chai means tea. And uh, you know, it was a whole thing that went on on the Brickinista broadcast uh, network. Uh, but yeah, hey, thanks, Aubrey. Yeah, and I wanted to, I'll, I'm glad you're here because I know you got, I think you got two of the uh, Lighthouse of Darkness, and that's what this is. Uh, two of them sewed up. And I went in, and one of the things I really needed to refine this time around. What's going on, Joel? What's up, yo? Uh, I had to, uh, because uh, when you originally put the two lighthouses together, and if you put them together back to back, they kind of make a lighthouse, but you got to do some some working with it. Uh, and one of the things that I was able to um, finally get eliminated from the back of those two things, there, there are these uh, two by eight uh, olive, yeah, olive. Uh, two by eight olive uh, plates that ran, you know, down the length of that. And I was able to get those out of there, but that took some doings and took some work in this to get this going with the snot. And there's, uh, it does come apart in a couple places. And if you hadn't seen it before, I did put a little uh, light brick in there. So when you push down on the top and you can rotate the top too, it uh, kind of has that uh, glow to it. And it's not as strong as, like, I wanted to do power functions lights in here, but uh, once I did that and just figured out a thing for it, and then I tried it, I was like, that looks appropriately creepy. And, you know, I kind of wanted to keep with the hidden side feel of it. Koi, what's going on, yo? Um, yeah, so uh, we're just going to take this apart real quick, because I, I want to I wanna actually fix something in here live so you can see what I did in here. Um, so, yeah, it's it's modularized. Uh, so you can take off each each little section. You can get a little tower there. comes off on its own. You got uh, this little second bit here. Hey, what's going on, Fab? Fab fan in the house. Oh, you got three of them. Yeah, so many awesome parts in this. And then you'll, you'll notice here that I have those black uh, little panel, curved panel bits that aren't in the uh, Lighthouse of Darkness. What I actually had to do was to make... Uh, shuttle mock that I did, I switched out the ones that came with the Overwatch shuttle, which I used a lot of parts for for that, and switched them out in here. And I was like, yeah, someday I'll go back in there and figure it out and how to make that, you know, look proper and right. Uh, and then also see down here, you just left with pretty much the base. And then uh, for the door handles, I used uh, uh, bull horns from the Monkey Kid uh, enemies and stuff. And I, I do have to change that plate into a tile so the door will open properly. But yeah, so that's pretty good. We got Daffy hanging out here. And one thing I did with this, um, because with the hidden side set, you know, it came with a jet ski. So now I got two jet skis. It's a decent jet ski. I did I did some tweaking on it. 
Uh, and then I have a police jet ski. So I need some place to store all my jet skis. It's getting ridiculous. Uh, so I left it hollow underneath. And yeah, and that's why the uh, those panels can come off there. Uh, and I, I want to make it look like, more like a rock formation that you can just remove. Uh, so I'm going to go back in and do that. But yeah, so it's it's got some storage area in there for jet skis. And uh, I could probably get uh, a couple other small craft in there. It's It's kind of roomy. Kind of eerie too. I mean, if if you could see them, I, I'd like to put spiders down there because it'd be appropriate. But nobody's ever going to see in there. All right. So that being said, getting that out of the way, uh, one of the first things I wanted to um, show you here with this is this is some serious snot action going on here, and I am so afraid that once I start taking this apart, it's just going to explode and go on the floor. But um, what I had to do here, and you see, that's just a single brick going down the side, holding these um, in each direction there. <sighs> Cross your fingers for me, please, if, if, if you can, because this may not, I mean, I, I, I actually, during the process of doing this and funking with it a couple times, I figured out a good way to do it. But if you can't tell by the expression on my face, I'm a little bit scared, a little bit apprehensive here. Yeesh. And there we go. Yeah. So... And I ended up locking things down pretty good here uh, because I reinforced it on the inside. That's that's a full one by eight plate going top to bottom. So everything's locked in on there uh, The curve because the curves just kept going their own way and doing their own thing. So I, I was like, I got to control y'all. So I got that locked in there. And then to keep this from flexing too much, I've got uh, two of those one by uh, one by four plates with the two studs on the end. And then I have the window attached in with the two snot bricks top and bottom. Just moved around that like that in the front. But one thing I want to do here, because you see with the with the lines, I, I want to keep the lines going and look clean around it. And I'm not going to be able to do that with that gray. I'm going to replace that eventually with white. But all my white ones for now are in my shuttle. Um, so, uh, but what I want to do here is make this a complete black line going across that. Because if, if it's that wide, it's going to be noticeable. And I mean, there, there's a break. And they're like the whole point of reconstructing this was to get rid of those breaks, right? So got to do it. But so I looked into some things, right? Well, I'll show you how I did it. And then I'll I'll tell you about the things I looked into. Because this is, this is some snot action going on here. Uh, and it's a couple precarious connections because it's only single stud connections for these two panels that I have on the side here. So what I did is you can see I reversed the snot bricks and that way they're gripping from both sides. It's, it's something I do a lot, a lot in my builds. Uh, Galactus's head and other parts on there and just, you know, different little things this is one of my little cheat codes. Um, In-person meetings and lugs, oi. Hey. Um, so to find a solution for that, to get the to get the black going across it, right? Um, but yeah, things are opening up. People are going back to lug meetings. Um, people are going to restaurants and feeling comfortable about it. someday I will. I mean, I've I've gone to one. It's every everything was still a little bit eerie and creepy, and I haven't really been back since. Um, but so yeah, what I need to do here is I got a two brick height, and what I what you'd want, what ideally you would do. Um, is replace these with black snot bricks, right? Um, but there's only two sets of those come in. One of them isn't even available yet for us. Uh, it's the uh, uh, boom box, the video boom box, the, the black one that's coming out. So that's got a good number of those in there. And then also there, there is one that is available right now, but I'm not buying the shuttle, <laughs> the space shuttle discovery just to get access to like 20 or so, you know, black snot bricks like that. And I'm not going to bricks and pieces it because that's going to take a month or so. So what I did um, is this, there's the super snot piece, uh, the, which is like the snot brick with side snot as well. And so what I did here is I stacked those and reversed those and it's got, you know, studs out to deal with, you know, so there would be studs facing out. But um, I just threw some grills on there and we're gonna see what it looks like, how it takes. Hopefully I put it back together correctly. So we'll, we'll find out. So yeah, this is uh this is what I've been working on a little bit here and there the last day or so, trying to get most of the stuff cleaned up so that we could work on the uh, underwater area today, which we're gonna do because I said we were gonna do that, and I wrote down all those uh, 
things I was going to research and guess how much I had that actually ended up researching. Well, we're just going to go for it because, you know, I got you all here. You got my back. If, if, if something looks out of place, I'm sure you'll call me on it. So please feel free to call me on it. All right. I'll see here. Did that. And then I reversed. Uh, I've got these one by one snap bricks in here also reversed. And that and that gets you that, you know, that turnaround really quick there. All right. So let's see. You and there I'm going the proper direction. And I think this is going to work. I think this is going to look all right. One thing I got to double check when I fix this is uh, this little bit that's on the hinge there. Because that's that's a little bit free floating and you got to go back through and uh, make sure it's secure and reattached. So, yeah, we got a black uh, black stripe going all the way through or we will have, as soon as this is all set. And yeah, I thought I thought for about 20 minutes about, uh, man, should I just go ahead and do that? And then when I show it off, it'll be all right. But I was like, nah, let's let's take a look inside the thing and then see what's going on in there. And then if if, if folks have one that they want to do some futzing with, you know, this might be a solution to be able to use to get a you know more tight curve on that uh, original bit if you'd like, especially if you use the stickers, because there, there are some good stickers that uh, make the place look a little run down. And of course I used them. All right, so got that there. Yeah, bricks and pieces, yo. Bricks and pieces got the good stuff. And uh, actually, these uh, these super snots I got from, and I got four of them here because I got a couple of the uh, wild lion set, and the wild lion set I believe comes with two. So get those. Plus, you get all that flame yellow and the dark red and. It's, it's, it's a good time. It's the it's the set that we used uh, for last month's uh, Rebrick This Challenge, which uh, a lot of folks participated in. Thank you so much for that. Um, and this month's Rebrick This, if you missed it yesterday, is going to be, you know, um, player's choice. Uh, if you want to do, well, there's it is going to be Brickheads. So it's going to be either the bride or the groom, uh, whichever you want to do. And I'm thinking you, if you want to, like, if you want to go whole hog with it, like, you can get both sets, throw it all together and try and come up with something because this is all about seeing what 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 your mind can come up with that my mind can't and other folks minds can't just because like everybody's take on this uh rebreak this has just been so so wild even if it's like everybody's doing a turtle everybody's doing a vastly different turtle if everybody's doing a dragon the dragons are different so yeah good times yeah, you might be you. You should be able to get the boombox parts for sure. Um, and it already came out with the discovery, so I'm sure it's available there because, like, I think the quantity in the discovery is something like eighteen or twenty four of them. So there's there's a few. And yes, I did put one of these in upside down. Okay, which one is it? It's you. <sighs> right. But yeah, you can you can tell how far along this thing is because it's not exploding as soon as I try and pick it up and do something with it. Because um, builds will start to do that when you're almost done with them, um, which is which is what happened with uh, Moto and Parsis at when when Moto picked it up, it exploded because they were almost they almost had it. Like it's all, like that's that's something I need to happen at least a good twenty minutes before you know I go down the runway with it. That way. I can identify immediately what's going on, throw some technical lift arms in there, brace that bad boy down, do, do something. Um, but yeah, to have that happen on the runway, it was just, it was a, it was a little bit of a heartbreaker. I got to flip this around here too. So the orientation on this, I, I don't know why I'm not, uh, there we go. There we go. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a heartbreaker. As, as soon as I saw the crack when, when he did the, uh, and I was like, oh, no, he lifted it from the top. He lifted it from the top. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, I was I was I was I was on pins and needles for that. The rest of that episode. And. Uh, yeah, T Tiffany found my. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe this was good. She she found that pretty hilarious that I was like all that in emotionally invested. But it was Moto, yo, he's like, you know, he's like fam. So. So of course, of course, when when things happen, it it, it I'm gonna feel it. Alrighty, 
And yeah, I'm phrasing, right? Okay, there we go. That's in there. That's proper. And then this is the piece that I use to, uh, because it's one by two uh, clip plates that are holding this panel bit down. And so to kind of brace that foot bit of that down to like two more studs or one more stud really. Uh, yeah, it's this little device here. And of course it had to pop off and this is tough to get your fingers back in there and do it. Again with the phrasing, sorry. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna take this apart. And Come in, yeah. There we are. All right, proper. Now we have a solid black line all the way around this mug. All right, let's put it together, see how it looks all as one, and then we're gonna move on to other stuff because wow, that was incredibly difficult for what it was. All right, and you can see it, it, it connects very, sorry Daffy. Uh, it connects very lightly here. Just uh, four jumpers is all that gets keeps it on there. And then there's, you know, four by four plate in there for somebody to stand on. So, yeah, get that back on without dropping this and busting it. And <laughs> I'm going to set it securely on the table because I don't trust it. I built you, but I don't trust you. And these jumpers are kind of ancient too, so that's not helping anything out. Oh my God, I put this in on upside down. You saw it here, folks. Ha! Okay. Yeesh, that's why. We're together now. We got it. That got that. All right. Now for the uh, 360. Yeah, yeah, it looks all right, and the the um the grills aren't too bad. And because they got that, um, because they're you know the because they are grills and they got that uh, that series of lines there, it does kind of bust up the light a little bit, so it doesn't look as much like a uh, you know just a straight side. So yeah, it works out, it works out all right. And then I just gotta replace those uh light gray ones and we'll be good. So yeah, there's the uh there's the lighthouse. And nothing major broke during that, and I can't tell you how excited I am about that. But I do have to re rescue Daffy because uh he's probably gonna be needed soon here. Um Yeah, the Richter machine, this is not built for the Richter machine. It's, it's, it's built for Nora standards. Nora doesn't headbutt that much. So if like if it, if it was something that she regularly just goes and rubs her cheeks on, because that's what she does. Like, that's how she tests things. She, she'll, she'll rub up and just, you know, do that against it. Uh, she did, she petted herself on Galactus's hands once. And I almost freaked out because, like, I saw him start to totter. And then it almost looked like he was petting her. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. Um so yeah, she she tests things with uh, she minimal safety equipment. She just goes right in there, no safety hats or anything. She's she's that dedicated. She's that good. All right. So yeah, that lighthouse uh, talked about that. Um, and I, some folks may know that I did have the Monkey King, Monkey Kid, Mech uh, hanging around, or strike that, reverse it, uh, hanging around for a little bit um, because I was uh, using it as an incentive to stop smoking. And all the starts and stops that I've been doing, I, I was like, you know what? It's been like a couple months. You've had that sin back here. You, you've given it the effort. You haven't succeeded, but you, you tried. So I let myself build it. And I, here it is. Now this is this is non-stickered, um, and I haven't put the little uh, frilly bits on and the cape and whatnot. But there's the monkey kid mech. It's it's a pretty solid build. It's a good build. Um, but with the red and the yellow, even with the gold here, I got to say, and this, this is my weird take on it. And especially since this, and this is what I see when you, when you don't have like the, the vinyl bits and the cape and all that extra stuff on there that this looks an awful lot like Iron Man to me. I mean, this, this, this almost looks like they took uh, plans for an Iron Man mech and you're like, you know what? We got this other thing we're going to do and we've already got enough Iron Man mechs out there. Why not? We just take this over and 
do that. So, so I, I mean, I like it. It's not going to stick around because I, I've actually got something I want to do with this. The reason, main reason I got that set is, is to get the store stickers for Pigsy uh, to put on the red building over here because that's where Pigsy's, uh, Pigsy's noodle shop is in my town. Uh, so now we got uh, signage up and we got the uh, noodles happening there. It's, it's, it's good times. Stop in if you get a chance. He's, he's, he's not exactly, you know, hip to customer service, but you know, the food's good. So, yeah. And I mean, that's, that's, that's just my quick little hot take on that thing. Um, like if you, if you were to go all stickers in and put all the, you know, the flare and, you know, tchotchkes on there and whatnot. It, it does look amazing. It does look flat out amazing. And one of the reasons I didn't want to do that is because I knew if I got it to that point, I wouldn't want to break it down and make it another thing. So just I just had to, to ease back a little bit because I have another big fill, figure that I'm, you know, the wheels are turning in the back of my mind about. Let's see. I'm just tuning in here to the chat a little bit just to make sure. Yeah, I, I want the discovery, but I got I got no place to put it right now sadly and I've, I've been trying to figure out like what i could rearrange and stuff and i mean i might have a backup plan but we'll see um let's see also failed all through the kids built stuff but it didn't take pictures oh no worry about it yeah i mean you can still you can still put them up now like um it just just use that if you're talking about the rebrick this you, you can do it with the hashtag now and uh you know this stuff will still be up there like if you could you can get the set because we're doing it with the month tag now, you can do that months down the line and throw it on that and it'll still pop up with that stuff. So like I say, go for it. Cause I, I might even do it if I get another wild lion set, which I might get another like couple because yeah, flame yellow. Um, but yeah, the four jumpers there. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Not buying any more uh, Lego till you get through your backlog for sure. Uh, I'm totally there too. Like I've, uh, I've got so much I need to work on, like mock wise and stuff around here that like I can't even afford to get sets in here because there's no place to put them until I get some, you know, space figured out and stuff. And that's that's one of the main considerations when you have a Lego collection, especially when you're like 20 years into a Lego collection is where are you going to put the stuff? Right. Um, what are you going to do with it? Because you want it. You, you sure want it. Like even though like I'm kind of upset about the Adidas shoe being just a single shoe. I still kind of want it. I still kind of want it, but I got nowhere to put it. So that, that, that helps me not, not, you know, going over the deep end, but yeah. Cause I can't, I can't sit on sets for too long and not build them unless it's like a gift with purchase that I'm, I'm just like, Oh, that's cutesy. I can set it away. But yeah, if I got a box like sitting here, it's, it's almost accusing me of not doing anything with it. So I, I have to build sets. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to jump before we, before we get into the, before we jump in the pool, I'm going to, show real quick because uh, I, I unfortunately i didn't make it to trick bricks on friday um which which was a shame because it was liz liz challenge and i i i, I, I adore liz um she's an awesome little character and like everybody did really great builds for that and yes there was a theme of liz mex but i i always knew there would be and then actually the the friday that it was announced um i started throwing because i had a couple pieces to this set aside uh, knowing that eventually I want to make a yellow mech out of this, but I wasn't sure how. Um, and I was like, oh, yes, yes, this is going to be Liz's. And then I threw out a couple more things and figured out how to do this and that. And I was like, it, it just came together as like an SD super QC mech. So, yeah, there's Liz's mech. Yeah, the, the gift with purchase, fab fan, for sure. It, uh, the gift with purchase looks fantastic. The, the big shoe, maybe not. I mean, it, it does look good, but like uh, the smaller one is desirable. And the minifig with the Adidas box, that's got to get. But yeah, so you see Liz is in there. And uh, one of the sentences uh, for my thing got dropped because like, I, 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 I was going to put in parentheses um, Liz to mother's answering machine or something like that. But I wanted to kind of, she was like leaving a message for her mom that she wasn't going to be home because she was going to fight Stephanie. And then I think that confused Flynn because like it was just Liz and nobody else was there. So then so the thing and they had to verify and then the second sentence got dropped. But the second sentence identified the names of the mechs and stuff. Um, so I just really want to mention those now because I mean, they're not great, but there's something. So this is L Lil Sis, L-I-L-S-Y-S. -S. So Lil System, Lil Sister. Yeah. 
so yeah, and, and, I mean, it's a little bit Bioshock in, inspired. It's a little bit, uh, you know, aliens inspired. Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, is for the longest time when I saw these little foot bits on uh, Bricklink, I wanted to do like, uh, like a Ripley mech or something like a loader for it. And, uh, and I never ended up getting them because I was like, nah, I, you know, you got the fee, but what else are you going to do? Right. So yeah, time, you know, <laughs> time, time does amazing things and, uh, it makes, makes parts available, makes, uh, elements, you know, come about that, uh, things start to gel. So like, if you have an idea and you don't have the bits to make it, or there's no conceivable way at that time to make it, just keep it popping around in the back of your head. Like, cause I mean, it's almost tough to keep out with all keep up with all the new elements that are coming out and the color variation. So there. But the other mech here, uh, the Stephanie mech, because if you if you don't know, I I have this little storyline in my mind where the whole animal rescue uh, thing that the friends do, it's kind of a sham, uh, and it's really just. Um, Poaching is essentially what it is. So um, Stephanie is a big time poacher and she's got a lot of cash coming in for selling the exotic, you know, animals, and especially the exotic baby animals. I mean, she's, yeah, she's, she's bringing it in hand over fish <laughs> Hand over fish. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is a whole lot of uh, transparent, uh, clear and trans blue, uh, trans light blue, mostly and a little bit of trans dark blue. Um, you know, your Technic pins and stuff, but for the most part, it's it's translucent. I mean, I have a couple brackets down here in that bit, and you got your voodoo balls here for the uh, for the articulations there, and the bionicle eyes. These are, these, that's how they're classified as bionicle eyes. Now, you can use them for a ton of different things, but like bionicle eyes is what they call them. Um, so that's what I refer, re refer to them as, and there are actually four in this set. Uh, set. This is not a set. Uh, there are four in this uh, crazy, crazy mock. So you got four there, or eight of them. So you got four there for the claws. Uh, you got two transparent blue ones here at the waist, and then you have the two transparent red ones there. Like, I, I it, it is like an ice mech, and I thought about that at first, but then I was like, well, maybe it's like a stealth mech, because I uh, I use those kind of, you can see the canopies there that I use at the top to kind of make it look like hair, because Stephanie's got kind of big, long hair. Right. Uh, so I kind of want that to reflect in the mech. So that's that's why that's there. But then at the same time, I'm looking at it from a different angle. and I'm like, it kind of looks a little bit like the Predator. And I'm like, well, Predator, right? Predator could do like the stealth thing, and, you know, go invisible and such. So, you know, it's it's a stealth mech, right? But yeah, you can see Stephanie right there in the center. Um, she's not really holding on to anything or any machinery, but you know, that's, that's part of the imagination too. You know, I imagine that whatever, you know, console she's using is also transparent or at least to us. And then, you know, through some kind of technological magic, see, she can see what's going on. She's like got heads up displays in there and things, you know, it's like Tony Stark's helmet inside that. But, you know, for us, the casual observer, it just looks like a blonde girl hanging out and actually you wouldn't really see her because it'd be a stealth mech, right? So, but I mean, if the mech was stealth, but Stephanie wasn't stealth, you just see like a blonde girl suspended in the air, just kind of like floating and hovering and doing things, which would be creepy and pretty cool. And I think actually Stephanie might get a kick out of that from the, from the deranged personality that I've developed for Stephanie. But yeah, so, so there's that, there, there's, there's this thing. And yeah, the arms moves a bit, a little bit resistance uh, here in the legs. It was tough to get them, like limited down so they didn't go too far in one way or the other and make it really tipsy. Um, and you know, like from a lot of my mechs and large characters and things like that, I, I try to make them freestanding. Uh, sometimes it's easier than others. And sometimes there's a lot of fail. Sometimes there's a lot of cleanup, but most of them I can get to that point. But yeah, so I, I just thought this thing was pretty fun and it's, it's kind of huge, right? Like it's big. Uh, so I had the, I had the two mechs. I had Stephanie's, uh, and this is called the Crystal Predator. Uh, that's that's the name I settled on for this. This is the Crystal Predator. Uh, and then Little Sis. And so I had these two, and I had them for a good minute. And I was, like, well, trying for the longest time to figure out what I'm going to do with them. So, like, with hours left on the clock, I actually think I, I, I went a little bit beyond the uh, deadline time for submitting this stuff. 
Uh, I threw together uh, this little um, Stephanie's layer like super quick. It was like an hour and a half, and there was a whole lot of laying down tiles, like because I wanted to originally make it look like she was busting through a wall. You know, there's all kinds of debris and smoke coming out, just like billowing across the floor. And then she comes in, and she like, you know, for the showdown with Stephanie. But I didn't really have anything to make a wall. So I just got like stacks of animal cages and things. And um, as many, as much friend stuff as I could throw in there. Because I had slides. I had like lavender stuff and uh, roller coaster bits and video boxes. And I tried to make it look like a thing as best as I could. Uh, with a with limited time, and it, it got to a point where I was like, all right, this is close enough. I got to get these pictures in or else Maraid's just never going to see this. So, so yeah, it was, it was a very weird thing, and it came together pretty quick, and I, I, I really enjoyed that challenge a lot. Looking forward to the next challenge, the next Tricky Bricks challenge, if, if y'all aren't aware. Uh, 16 by 16 micro, um, uh, 16 by 16 micro city, you know, micro, uh, micro scale, mini, mini micro going to be small, right? But it's a, it's a challenge that they did in the past. Um, and I'm really excited to approach it again because the, the submission that I had last time around, I, I, I enjoyed. But the color differential between the land and the water, because I used dark blue for the water, and uh, it was kind of dark green for the land, it, it, it really was it was tough to see where one started and one. You know, it was kind of a seaside thing. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to take another stab at it and get maybe a little bit more redemption going my way. Hopefully I can come up with something halfway decent. We'll find out for sure. All right. So uh, first I'm going to take a drink of coffee because I need it. All right. Next. Let's see. Yeah, we're just down to the thing now. Uh, so let me get this out of the way. And this is the, uh, the monkey kid side build. Uh, and this is Pigsy's Noodle Shop down here below. But I took all the signage out, of course, so it just kind of looks run down and decrepit a little bit. But there's one thing I want to point out here, because this has been disturbing me ever since I saw this and put this together. And I need to I need to draw attention to this, because this might not be a thing that most people, that would stand out to a lot of folks, who didn't live through a certain era. Okay, And I'm just grabbing some things and setting them aside so I don't forget, because these folks... I've all got to uh, go through the Ellis Island thing to, to get in the city. So they got to they gotta be added to the census and whatnot. Okay, but it's got this little video game uh, console here on the side. It's not a console. It's an arcade machine, all right? It's, a, it's an arcade cabinet that you would find in an arcade, right? Let me get this thing out of here so you can see it a little bit better as long as I don't break things. But look at the screen. Uh, and if you've ever played arcade game in an arcade, like we're talking old school stuff, stuff, because this is like it looks like Space Invaders, Pac-Man, that kind of that kind of old, old deal, right? There's no such thing as a pause screen when you're playing in the arcade, man, on a cabinet. Hell no, that would never happen. Like that could never happen. It's it's just not a thing. It it just it just wasn't. Like you were there, you were invested. You put your quarter in. You're gonna play. If you don't play. You know, you, you can't pause and walk away and go get a soda or something like that. No, you're in the thing. Because if you pause and you try to walk away from your cabinet, somebody else is going to jump in there with their quarters, right? So just, just something that stood out to me and, you know, perturbed me just a little bit because I've been playing video games for my entire life. So yeah, pause screen on an arcade cabinet. It's not a thing. It is not a thing. Okay. That's out of the way. That rant is gone. Hey, Monica, what's going on? So, yeah, there's, there's, that. and I, I, I had to get that out of my system. Thanks for bearing with me on that. Um, but yeah, there's, like, if you're playing, like, no, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping because, like, I could just keep going. I could, I could keep ranting, but trust me, we, we, nobody wants to do that. Oh, and Fabby Fan MKE, speaking about uh, the Adidas coming out. I was thinking, you know, I was, uh, when the Looney Tunes came out, I was thinking about doing a Gossamer. And then for Gossamer, I was like, well, Gossamer's got to have Chucks, right? Because, you know, Gossamer wears, you know, like Converse or something like that. So with all the Adidas thing, and I was like, you know what? I could make a pair of Chucks. So I made a pair of Chucks. And I might make a Gossamer to wear the Chucks. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. And these are a really easy build. 
um, if, you, if you just want a pair of display mini shoes. So that's that uh, inverted tile there with the pinhole. Uh, we have a headlight brick. Just because it insets that side a little bit, I tried it with the uh, two studs out snot, and it, it, it just looked way too fat. But it gets a nice profile there when you tuck it in like that. And then there next to that, we've got a one-by-one one plate and a cheese wedge. In the front, we got one of those little Quonset domes. On the top, tombstone tile. You know, and it, just, and it just looks like a shoe to me. But of course, the tombstone tile, if I'm going to put these on anybody, is going to be replaced like with a hollow stud or something like that. But yeah, right? These are these are awesome. I think they're cool. So yeah, a little pair of chucks. <laughs> I have no idea why I just did that out of the blue today. Like, I was in here trying to sort things and get it cleaned up a little bit. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a random pair of chucks. So, yeah. Oh, DMV. <sighs> Well, Michigan is still like on, you know, you have to have an appointment to go to the DMV, which actually has made things go a little bit quicker when you have to go to the DMV. And I don't think that, like it's been said that they're going to continue that trend uh, probably through the end of the year, at least, uh, because it's actually been working out pretty good for them. So, yeah, DMV. It's the thing. All right. Now to roll the big, super massive, not really uh, table over here get going on this and then I gotta get this water area out of the way so you're gonna have to I do apologize but uh, bear with me just a moment because I have this entire waterway here this just kind of clouding up the thing and as you can hear I'm dropping bits so I'm scooting oh and of course there's something where I want to put this hold on come on bird another uh, mock I'm working on, which was in the way, is I'm working on a Phoenix, a non-Harry Potter Phoenix, but yeah, so she's, she's, she's taking in some more work, long time goal, all right, so that's done, that's out of the way, we're good over there, now we're in build area, and then I have a whole lot of these one by two limes, which are for a different project, I'm making a chair for Galactus. So I'm going to set those down there and get them out of the way because I don't want to blow through those. I'm going to need probably all those and then some. All right, so I'm going to roll down here for a little bit. Oh, the stickers on the van expired. Oh, right on. Yeah, horrible lines. We we do too in, in Michigan, but um, like uh, our Secretary of State's kind of been on her game a little bit. So she's, uh, you got appointments. You've got uh, pre-registration, like you, you can set up an appointment time, like before the whole thing started, you could, you could set a time that you were going to be there. And like it would tell you, you know, or, you know, you could get in line early for it if you didn't want to set up a specific time appointment in advance. So, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty good. Oh, yes, the new address too, word. Yeah, you got that going on, which is which is awesome. Congrats. The place looks aw really great. And the um, the Lego room is amazing. Chester. Uh, and this is my uh, collection of dark pink and lavender that I got going on there. Medium lavender. The reg regular lavender is still mostly in the thing. All right. So the size we're going to be working on on here, like I said last time, uh, if you were here last time or if you, if you weren't, I recap pretty frequently. So you're, you're good. And I think we got a decent angle where like, you can see at least the action part of my face and uh, see what's going on on the table. So we'll, we'll see how this works. And so far, so good on the Wi-Fi. Um, and just, just a heads up. They're doing some work out there uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, and there was a flicker of power loss sometime earlier, around 10 a.m., so about two hours or so ago. Uh, so that may happen again. And if it does, I apologize. I'll try and get things up and running again. Um, but it seems like they're done with whatever they were doing earlier. So we'll, we'll see. And we also might hear the beep, beep, beep of things backing up. But this is lunch hour, so they might be on break. But what more appropriate sound to build Lego to than, you know, construction sounds, right? That's that's how we do. Lavender Lug represent freaking Nista. What's going on, yo? Yeah, so we're uh, we're going underwater here. Um, I've, <laughs> I've worked all, all the way through my uh, sundry of topics. Uh, ancillary to this. And now we're now we're doing the thing. And let's see. Might be able to back it up a little bit more. 
and I have this straight <laughs> straight wall of blue that uh, I recoup from behind my waterfall, which is broken down and sad times all around. True, but you know, lingo changes, it evolves. All right, so this is the underwater area that we're looking at, and this is the size of it. Monica remembers uh, when, when I tried to do this the first time, and I reached out for help because I couldn't get everything looking right, you know, um, mostly because I was trying to use a lot of colors that didn't really go there, and I was trying to make them appear as other things, and just, uh, I was trying to make something work that didn't work. So we're starting over fresh. Uh, it's a totally different location now going to be under uh, the table over here and there's there's a whole lot of monkey kid stuff here I need to sort as well but hopefully it's not going to roll off the table we'll just keep it right over there by Chester yeah he's he's a slacker he's not going to watch anything all right so so yeah here we are this is our undersea realm now we're going to have a little bit of you know area we can go on the sides of this and put things up uh, storms too bad. Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday was pretty good. We did a little rain yesterday. Um, but the three days before that, oh my goodness, yo, it was just like nonstop. Like the house was leaking in places. It doesn't usually leak because the rain was coming from a different direction than it usually does. And the house wasn't ready for that. So yeah, it's, it's just like, Hey, check this out. Did you know I can leak here? I was like, no, I didn't know that. That's amazing. So yeah, I was finding out all new, all kinds of new stuff about the house. But yeah, it's like so much rain, and of course it starts raining on the day that I think I'm going to mow. So my lawn is just a beast right now. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm letting it do its thing. I'll, I'll we'll be out there after this today. Um, but I need to get this underwater area set. Then I can worry about my out of water area because I mean it's drying up a little bit. But I do have a ditch that's kind of a little bit full. Uh, probably grow some sea monkeys in there or some. All right, so I'm going to start with this little sandbar here, right? Now, these were two island pieces that came with uh, just a, it was actually a pretty cheap uh, juniors type set uh, for pirates back in the day. And, you know, you dig in here and you get your treasure or whatnot. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to be using it here for is just like a random sandbar that's kind of popping up in the water. And it's good to prop stuff up on. Uh, and you have these connection points here that have hollow studs in the top. So if you need to put some grass there or something or have some random sea life, sea creature, that'll that'll do the trick too. But yeah, I mean, um, so glad the rain is done now because I want to go out in the yard and do things. But I mean, honestly, my grass needed it so much, so much. Like it was crispy when I walked across it. Now you go out there and it's all lush. Just checking in here for any more tan plates. Get this lavender out too, why not? There we go. Get that little flower bit out of the way so I don't uh, step on it later because I am barefoot up in here. And this is a hardwood floor, so. So you can hear where the Lego falls, which is good. Uh, and you can find the Lego relatively well, so long as it's not in the medium nougat family. All right, so what I'm going to do here first is just put a little surface on the top of that because, you know, it's, uh, it's an exposed eight by eight area. And I don't want people falling in. I might hide some stuff down there eventually, but probably not. And so what I'm gonna do here, one of these long ones, make it a spine across the center, something like, let's see if I can do this right, there, there, yeah, leak by the chimney, same, had to leak by the chimney, and it, like, usually it'll, like, leak by the bottom, right, um, but it, like, let, leaked somewhere up top. And so I need to get on the roof and see if I can seal it up because like it leaked in the stairwell going down to the basement, which is like nothing ever leaks there. It's, it was so weird. T, T was like, um, is there supposed to be water coming out of here? So, so there was that and I dealt with that. And that was fun. 
All right, so I'm going to have to get a little creative here because I'm out of larger tan plates. So we got a whole lot of uh, two by sixes because if you go to the uh, um, the Detroit area Lego store, two by sixes, you're 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 always going to find them there. Yeah, sewer backups over here. Like I've I've gone by people's yards that are like lakes, you know, and not drain. Um, went to a friend's open house uh, yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Um, and that's, that's, I like, I, I stopped in for the first probably five minutes or so of the tricky break stream. And then I had jet because, uh, friends were having an open house. Uh, like this, this is the first time I've ever seen like anybody I like knew from birth become like graduated from high school and stuff. Well, no, not the first time, the second time, but still it's, it's, it's freaky. Anytime it happens, but you're like, that means I'm old. This is not going to work like that. This is going to make this double stacked and double hunted. But yeah, so it was, I mean, it was a cool thing. But yeah, their backyard, it had some swampy areas for sure. And like this dude was like, used to be a landscaper. He was, he's retired now. But uh, yeah, it was held at the grandfather's house. And I've been over there a few times. And this dude is, this dude's got his stuff down, like not nary a weed to be found anywhere. But yeah, he had, he had some puddle action going on. All right. So, oh, you know what? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm going to do something a little bit weird, and this is going to be perfect. Because I, I had this little stand, this display stand that I made for Liz's mech. Because that was that was before I did the whole uh, Stephanie's Evil layer. Yeah, I had, I had a little bit of leakage in the basement, but nothing serious. Um, a little bit over by, like, this old organ we've got down there. Um, and then uh, some in the furnace room, but that's, that's typical. That's to be expected. And there was a little bit of seepage here and there. But, you know, for the most part pretty good. My neighbor across the street though, her sump pump, she said has just been running nonstop. And actually I have to, I have to fix uh, <laughs> the, the outlet for the, for her sump pump this week, actually, because that's, that's something that I do. Um, not, not that I'm a plumber or anything like that, but I, I help out folks. If I, if I think I got a way that I can fix something because I like to fix things. All right. And there we go. Yeah. So, I mean, this one's got the greats over here on this side, which it's not great. But it is great because it covers the entire area. Plus, you can see down through in there, too. So, like, that would be a good place if I wanted to have... You know what? You know what I could do? Because I have an entire drawer of reddish-brown. Like I could go and I'm 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 gonna put this out there and see see what people think right now because I I could go ahead and you know keep working on the sandbar as a center bit or I've got all this brown we could make a sunken pirate ship I could do a sunken pirate ship in here and then that would be like an awesome area for like little creatures to go in and out of you know have treasures hidden in there you know the sandbar will be existing but it'll be off to the side or something so so what what do y'all think should we do a uh, sunken pirate ship Let's wait. Uh, Wait for a second to see if it goes through and it goes through. And yes, yeah, sunken pirate ship, sunken pirate ship. We got one for sunken pirate ship. So I, I, I do now have a mask that I can use for that. Uh, of course, for sunken pirate ship. All right. Okay, sunken pirate ship it is. But yeah, yeah, I I, I understand, Brickinese. You're 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 biased towards pirates. It's it, it's understandable. A buccaneer is always going to buckin, right? Is that a is that a verb? Buckin? No, it's not a verb. Okay. And I think they were called buccaneers because it had something to do with them uh, eating dried jerky type meat or something like that. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, okay. Brown jaw. That's that's a lot to work with. We're just gonna set the whole drawer out. Beckon, beckon here. I'm like a town crier. All right. So what do we got? We get we're gonna go through the big pieces first. See what like large masses we can get going off here. Um, we've got these quarter tree trunk bits with the two uh, inverted arches. Well, inverted arches. This is an arch. Um, going off there, inverted arch would be, you know, 
<laughs> I've got this uh, lifter bit. This, this is incredibly large Lego spoon. Uh, I've got more of that tree trunk bit. And I'm thinking about that for like the back cabin area of the thing. Less for like hull. Because I'm thinking, you know, the hull's probably going to be smashed in. So most of what we're going to see is, you know, the upper deck or, you know, that kind of area of the thing. <laughs> Buccaneer will always beckon the Buccaneer. That is a great sentence. That is a great sentence. Try saying that three times fast because I'm not going to. Right. So, and yeah, I've got uh, I've got these huge wedges, which are going to make something look awesome. Recently acquired. Thanks, neighbors. We've got these bits that were going to be babu legs, but uh, too much curve, believe it or not. We've got inverted slopes. Let's see if I can get all this laid out or most of, the, most of the actionable stuff, like in the next 10 minutes. And then we're going to see like if we can, how far we can get in this next hour doing doing this thing here. Okay. So I got foliage in here and stuff. And there's a lot of the green foliage, which, oh, hey, we're going to need this a little coral bit. Going to need this. Treasure chest. Slopes. Inverted stuff. Okay, so most of the big stuff is out. Do a little scoop forward, grab first. And I mean, this is this is a great telephone pole for sure. Um, but that was in his past life. Sorry, Justin Ramsden. Not today. All right, more coffee. Oh, that's delicious. All right. You know, I wasn't much of a coffee drinker before this whole thing. I mean, I dabbled. But now I'm bona fide. Nope. nope. Not saying that again. Yeah. All right. So we got a lot of actionable brick in here. Like legit brick brick. Because, like, something I've been doing when I go through and do stuff is, like, I've been putting colors and color families together. Okay, that that even sounds wrong to me. I've been I've been setting stuff aside for certain areas of the builds that, that need, uh, you know, concentration of hues. There we go. And chroma. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we got a couple scroll bits. That's going to be nice. Okay. So many slopes in there, too, yo. Ah, uh, too much soda. Word. Oh, I, I have not forgotten the lavender. We've got uh, we got lavender action right here and right here. Uh, mostly this is light lavender with just a hint of uh, medium lavender. You know, medium lavender is my more preferred. It's got, it's like right there tonally for me. Um, but light lavender is, it's got its place. It really does. It's, it's, it's a really nice accent color, you know. All right. I think I got a lot of good big brick out here. And we got Palisades. Palisades brick. See there with that little undulation down it. These came out uh, at the time of Fort Lego Rado, so that's the thing. Because a palisade is a wall of like wooden logs. That's essentially what a palisade is, and that's why it's called that because it has that undulation that mimics that. And there are larger panels for it. They're also available in uh, one by two as well as one by one by four. But that's neither here nor there. It's actually right there. Here we go. I just, I just keep finding more stuff in here I can use. Ah, light lavender base, nice. I don't know what I'm gonna do for mine yet. Like I've 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 had a couple really good 
like ideas from my micro city pop through and out of my mind. And part of me just wants to de dedicate the entire 16 by 16 to one good si size skyscraper. Right. But then like part of me is like, no, if you got that much space and room, you can make something really intense and, you know, have like alleys and roads and, you know, just, just see the cavernous side of a city. You know, that's, that's one of the great things like the, the depth and with a little bit of light coming out from down below. So like, that's, that's where my mind has been going with this. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But for now, pirate ship. All right, so, and originally what I wanted to do is I wanted to make each of these six sections so they can be lifted and set down there separately so I don't have to like try and balance the whole thing like that. But if I have a solid unitary pirate ship in the center, welding the whole thing together, it's not gonna be too tough to lift as long as I don't have a whole lot of uh, extra weight on the sides and whatever creatures and stuff I, we end up putting on here, we end up putting on after the fact. Yeah, take it easy, Aubrey. Have fun at the pool. Tuscan Productions, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, Tatooine. It might look like Tatooine. True, because, I mean, this is the Tatooine palette. But no, we're actually going underneath, uh, under the waves, and we're building uh, building an underwater scene. We're starting here at the heart of it with a pirate ship. So, yeah, we're going to see how this all works. And... I don't think I have any brown windows, so I'm not even going to waste my time looking for them. So I'm pretty sure they've all been used up. But we're going to set this up here to kind of elevate the back. And I do have some uh, large brown plates. Yeah, this is the most rattly thing I have is my large plate. So sorry for that. Um, I'm no Walter Mersch, that's for sure. But we'll get this done. Somehow, some way. All right. And we're, we're going to see, like I say, we're going we're gonna to see where we get in the hour. Um, and I am kind of a clock watcher, so I have a clock right here uh, just out of frame. This is, well, it's not out of frame. You guys wouldn't be able to see it. But I can see it. It's right there. I know what's going on. I can check it out. Keep my eye on it. Be aware, as it were. So, yeah, we're just going to plug stuff in, see what works. Maybe a little ebb and flow. Yeah, good luck. Good luck at the uh, DMV, Monica. Fingers crossed. Underwater, take inspiration from Mon Cala from Star Wars. Yeah! I kind of want to forget that that ever existed. <laughs> Sorry. I mean... But, I mean, you know, it's... This, this is just going to be like a bright underwater... Actually, what I'm taking my uh, uh, inspiration for from this is just pretty much an aquarium. You know, somebody's aquarium that you see. You see that nice light layered bottom. Uh, and then you see like some trash keys and stuff in the center, but essentially it's just going to be subs and aquatic life with some, uh, with some, uh, flora to go with the fauna. You know what I mean? All right. So there, there I need, do I have another? I don't know if I do. Where did I put the thing? No, oh, nothing's wrong with Moncala. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just given the, I, I speak bad on prequels. I, I always will. But it's crazy because I like have all these really strange and out there opinions about movies and stuff that I like, nobody else likes. So I like the last three movies actually more than the center three movies, which were the original ones. And I grew up with the stuff, yo. I was buying Kenner toys. <laughs> I, I saw episode four at the drive-in, dog. But, yeah, so, like, I have controversial opinions, so please forgive me for that. I, I'm a fan of Speed Racer, the movie. I like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I enjoy Godfather 3. You're not going to hear that many other places. 
All right, so let's kind of do that. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, the acting is dodgy. The directing is even worse. Um, but yeah, Tusker Raiders, you know, they, they, they get the bad rap. They get the bad rap a lot. They really do. And that's that's one of the things I liked about Mandalorian, where it kind of <laughs> it, it it helped out the Tuscan Raiders uh, image just a little bit. All right, so we're going to bump this up just a hair under here. There we go. There we go. Keenan with the Crystal Skull is, is, is pretty cool. Like, I mean, the, and this is from somebody who grew up watching indie stuff, you know? Not that I'm trying to say that there's any kind of value in my opinion. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, I was there at a time and place, and the new stuff looks good to me. Although I did hear that he, uh, didn't he, like, injure himself on the set of the new movie or something, which I think happens every time they try and do that. I think Harrison might even have uh, messed himself up on uh, some of the Star Wars sets, too. It could just be him being a diva. Because I've heard Harrison Ford is a bit of a diva. I I have my sources. Um, I know someone who was from the town... Uh, or from a town in North Carolina where they filmed a lot of the fugitive. And she said that when they were there doing that, Tommy Lee Jones, very personable, went out and talked to, you know, the townsfolk and stuff. And, you know, was, was just a dude, you know, who was, who was there, you know, and, you know, just, just an average guy that was approachable. Whereas Harrison Ford was ultra reclusive, didn't come out, didn't talk to anybody, did his stuff, did his lines and kept to himself. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's the opinion on that. But how much how much of that translates into actually what I said? Yeah. But I mean, you know, you're you're an actor. It's, if if it's his process to do that, and you know, to to keep his character, I say I say do it. What, whatever you got to do to bring it, bring it. All right. So we got that. Moving these fours in here. There we go. Yeah. I actually, uh, speaking about Harry Potter, I kind of overdeed on, or overdeed, overdosed on Harry Potter a little bit back in the day, uh, especially when it came to Lego stuff. Like, I had a Hogwarts. That was my big, first big, large display. It was like I had an entire wall that was like a cutaway of Hogwarts. Um, but it became unwieldy. A lot of the pieces I ended up moving into the city here uh, and just breaking that down. And actually, I ended up selling off a lot of my old Potter minifigs, um, which was great. I recouped the loss, or <laughs> recouped the loss. I, I recouped the expenditure and then some because, uh, you know, Lego only really appreciates, and especially when you have the uh, some of those old Potter minifigures. Go that that. All right, so we're we're just kind of making an extension of the deck down here. Let's see if I can clear out some of this debris behind it so you can you can get the get a picture of the silhouette. So we got that coming up here, and we're gonna make the kind of a tall tall ship here in the back because we can we can work with this a little bit. I mean, we don't have to make this thing uh, float. We don't have to make this thing seaworthy. It's an after the fact ship. So like if if you want to do something a little bit crazy with it, why not? All right. So we got that. We got that. I would like to have a little bit of gold accent going on through here, you know, but I mean that's something we can add in later. So I really just want to try and work with what we got here to see how much of it we can use up. Okay, and then 
Let's see, could we do something like that? Would that work? Probably not. Probably not. All right, so we're going to need to lock this in because everything is shifting on me here. Uh, we are going to do that with some brown tops. And actually, this is a this is going to be a build that's going to be informed a lot by my uh, extended time playing Minecraft in the underwater areas there because uh, I, I had to distance myself from Minecraft. I spent too much time in that virtual world, really. Uh, I couldn't justify it anymore, so I had to regain uh, some kind of semblance of control, so I stepped away. Um, but like just before I stepped away, like is when they did because I, I played it on PS4. So when they when they did the update with uh, this is back a little bit with the uh, um, with the coral and the underwater stuff, the pirate ships and the sea turtles and all that. Oh, I play I played that thing so much, and then I kind of that's that's when I when I realized that I had a problem and I had to step away. there. Hey, Aqua Mike. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yo, we're, we're, we're doing the underwater stuff. Um, we're starting with a sunken pirate ship. So you are here just in time, homeboy. Yeah, Minecraft is a little bit evil. Minecraft, uh, Minecraft will suck you in. Especially if you're playing survival, you, you got to make it through that first night. And then once you make it through that first night, and then it's just like when you're, when you're first starting off, oh man, it just, it sucks you right in. Yeah, water stuff for sure, homie. All right. There, and I'm using these slopes to try and build up this cabin bit here in a, in the back just to see what we can, just to see what we're going to end up looking like. A couple palisades to top it off. We've got that undulation. All right, and then, let's see, something like, I don't know. Let's do this. Let's, that'll make it look a little bit better. And then we're going to get an axle and we're going to throw it in there just to secure this thing a little bit. <laughs> My axles, of course, are hidden by all the stuff that I'm scooting around. So blue wall, get out of here. Go over there for now. Go over there. Axles. We want to go one longer than that. In this is why we want to use axles. Bring that up. Ooh, tried in the salt craft. Nice. All right, and it looks like I'm going to need one more round plate to really get that uh, axle length to jive. There. That's right, folks. We're, we're throwing bricks. It's it's crazy. All right, there we go. There, and then all the way in. Nice. All right. There we go. All right, so we got a mast. We've got uh, the back little elevated bit here. We've got this that I'm, I'm still convinced we can do something with because it's... It's got a shipley shape. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to move everything around and get it all set up to where I can grab things. And I was like, I'm not going to use too much of this stuff today. And then I get I get into this build, and now I'm like, well, I, I can kind of use that. So we're going to see if I have, and I don't think I do. I've got one. Uh, brown snot. It's not healthy for sure, but I'm looking for brown snot. One and some dark tan, so I'm assuming the most of the brown snot I have is going to be in here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Or brackets, even. I could just use some brackets even. Heavens to Megatroid. All 
All right, there is. Nope, that's not. Ah! Good light. Not a complete washout, but not exactly a victory either. I uh, found a couple one by one brown snots, and I think I do have actually two more in here. Because if I do these, use this, I kind of want to use it like right here or something. Or maybe up towards, uh, yeah, the bow. We're going to have it up at the bow to make it look like that's popping up a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to do this, we're going to make it work. Here we go. One and two and a total of four. Then I'm gonna pull out two of these black snots just just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Ah. All right. So we'll see. We'll see how this works with two. It's not strong enough. Or we're going to go for more. See you, Tuscan. I'll, I'll give the I'll give the Clone Wars another watch just to Clone Wars and the prequels and that just just to just to try and understand. Uh, I don't know if it was like disappointment that they weren't as good as I hyped them up to be in my mind, the prequels I'm talking about, or if there was just so much lore at that point about like the Clone Wars and all the stuff from the old days that seeing it actually up there was just was um, anticlimactic, maybe a little bit. But that's just me. That's just me being judgy about Star Wars. All right, so yeah, we got kind of we got kind of a thing starting here. Um, any thoughts so far? Um, things to improve, things to add uh, on here. Of course, we're 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 just going to be seeing like the top of the top deck really, and a little bit of the bow and the uh, cabin coming up off the end here. Uh, so we're not going to really see any uh, cannons, uh, anything like that, because this is this has been down here a while and it's drifted over with a lot of sand. That's essentially what I want to. Um, I want this thing to look like. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That should be in maybe a little bit closer. So yeah, um, any suggestions you all have, toss them out there. Um, I am always game for input. Now, do I have a brick separator? I got one right here. Let's see. Alexander twenty three. What's up, man? What's going on? Uh, we're doing an underwater build. Uh, we're making a we're making a ship. So if you got any uh, any suggestions for it, shoot, hit me with them. Uh, there we go. That's going to be a little bit better, I think. Just trying to do a little bow bit. Does wide. There. Kind of a little bit. I'm going to see helmet wheel. Crow's nest. Uh, color clicky do I use? Whatever one uh, came with the last that I had that I haven't put with the other clickies. Uh, so currently that's the uh, dark turquoise one. Super keen. Uh, yeah, I keep all I keep all my clickies. I keep all my um, my brick separators in a TARDIS lunchbox that's actually kind of blocked by all these tables that are scooted over there. 
so yeah, once it, once they kind of accumulate, once I get like four or five of them laying around, I'll just like choose one and then put the rest of them away. But I will say this: doing doing a lot of mosaics, doing a lot of tiles. Um, I've been beating up the end of these like you wouldn't believe. Like it's been fierce. So like I've I've had to switch out clickies a few times because I just worn them down so far that they just don't function right anymore. It's so just something to know. It's, it's it's good to have a few of them on hand. Rigging could be could do the rigging. Um, but then again, we're we're also talking about age. Um, but I could uh, end up putting this like an angle. Yeah, I'm going to end up putting this at an angle to make it look, you know, more disheveled and busted up and what whatnot. Helm, yeah, we're going to do that. Um, just got to get kind of a uh, way to cap this back here. Keep mine in an old CD burnable stack, clear apart cylinder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I used to use those for a lot of things. I used to burn a lot of CDs, yo. I back in the day, like, cause it's just a great way to have it with you whenever, you, wherever you went, and that lasted for what, bud, five, ten years, and then like MP3s really took hold and became the preferred method for everything. Okay, I'm just throwing some bricks on here, just to you know. Things look a little bit weird. Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Move this back to here. Pirate flag. But yeah, we got. But also paying attention to like we're gonna assume this thing has been underwater for at least 150 years. So whatever is remaining here. It's going to be like solid brass or uh, nylon petrified wood. Uh, is one of going anchor, anchor. That that's a good one. I've got I've got anchors. I've got an anchor somewhere. It's down there in the business section. Uh, probably fish that out in a wee bit. But yeah, so I think I, I think we have a size for the tiger ship. So yeah, I think I think this is what we're working with for size wise, um, and that's going to work out pretty good, I think. So yeah, we're just going to bulk this up a bit, um, keeping an eye on disheveled, trying to see what other things we can work in. Uh, crow's nest. If I had a railing um, that was small enough to do this like that, I, I would totally do it. Skeletons, skeletons for sure. Skeletons, skeletons all up in this mug for real. We're we're going to be. Uh, that this is this is gonna be Davy Jones' locker on the reel. Custom make and anchor at 45 degree like statue head in Barracuda Bay. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. I don't know if I have anybody that because I would I would think if you like you had a masthead or something like that down here, or like uh I don't have a brown mono fig, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I bought the Daily Daily Bugle, spent all my like Lego allowance for a good couple months, so I wasn't able to get the Everything Was Awesome yet, uh, or Everyone Is Awesome yet. Um, but I will be getting that eventually. I'll be getting two, and then I'll have like one you know, for the set, and then the other one for all the awesome parts that come with it that you can do anything with. So I miss that. Uh, lavender Tiki Head. For sure, I want a Lavender Tiki Head. Have you seen the... Uh, um, the last Ninjago line that came out, uh, the Thunder Warriors and whatnot that they have there, they're like lavender and they got a tiki action going on. And it's amazing. I want that stuff, but I have no place to put that stuff. And I'm hoping I can get this thing together in time to maybe justify a purchase of a Ninjago sub that's coming up, but maybe not. I don't know if this is going to be big enough. We'll see. We'll see when we get it all you know, like laid out. That's going to be in August. And if, if we can get this thing slapped together and looking decent by August, I'm saying that first week of August might get that uh, submarine, try and put it down here. Yeah. So Lavender Tiki Head, that is, that is a great idea. I would like to have uh, something like that going on here, but I don't have a Lavender Tiki Head. I don't know if I have enough Lavender like enough variation in my lavender supply to make a good tiki head. I mean, I can make a tiki head, 
probably just wouldn't look good. But <laughs> that's, I mean, sure, I can do it. I can make it. Whether it looks decent or not, that's 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 up to uh, that's up to the parts I have on hand. There is a lavender pirate chest actually, and I I remember I was looking for it last time, and it's in here with my dark tank and whatnot. There she is, and I believe I got two. The other one isn't in there, though. The other one, I think, is in use somewhere. Yeah, dude, yeah, lavender, like, it, it's, it's so underappreciated, right? Like, I mean, everyone is awesome. Every color is awesome. Lavender is awesome. Therefore, if there are people who don't appreciate lavender as much as you do, try and make something awesome out of lavender and share it with them and be like, this is this is what we can do with lavender, y'all. This 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 is, there's, there's potential here. Don't just lavender. But I mean, there are some people who just aren't going to like lavender. No matter how hard you try and convince them, and that's okay. More lavender for me, make it cheap. Because um, you know, I love to scout Bricklink stores for some cheap parts. Matter of fact, I'm kind of doing it right now. Well, not currently, but like I have, a, I have an order that I'm going through, and I'm I'm scouring their entire store before I commit. And, you know, go ahead and pay for it. There. All right. That's got kind of the, that's got kind of the angle that there we want on top. But that being said, with that lip coming over a little bit, we can kick this back a little bit more. So let's try and kick this back. Two. Yeah, we're going to kick it back to, so, come on now, just to see how it goes. We're not doing too bad. Yeah, Lavender Leg represent, for sure. We're not doing too bad on time. Um, about 25 minutes in, and we're, we're this far on a pirate ship. I'm not mad at it. I think it's working out pretty good. I mean, I am mad at pieces falling off, but, you know, I've built and destroyed enough things to where if I'm in the process of building something and it starts to fall apart on me, I just kind of laugh to myself because it's, it's resisting. It's resisting the stuff that you want to do to it. Okay, that's just a bad way to start that sentence. It's, it's resisting the changes that you want to make in the in the form. Uh, and so that that must be a good thing because it's, it's getting close to perfection, right? Or at least that's what I tell myself. Joe Marbella returns. We're doing we're doing pretty good on the ship, yo. Uh, we're getting pretty far. I think. I could be totally wrong. I am not uh, I am not a shipwright. All right. A couple more plates. Ah. Right on. Found the plates I was after and another little snot bit. Well, that's more of a snout. Uh, is that what we call these snout bricks? It's got the little. Yeah, I'm way back. Like the you see the two by two with the two plates high and the little hollow studs coming out the side. Snout brick, I think, is the uh, the popular term. All right, yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually using the, the screen over here to see how the angle of this is looking because I, I can see it from my side. And then when I see it from the other side, it, it, it all plays in a little bit. Thanks. Thanks, Brickinista. We're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. Um, the crow's nest. I wanted to make it look more like a crow's nest um, because, <laughs> because that way then you'll see that it's, it's a crow's nest. So I'm going to, uh, they're all the way in the bottom. I want to put some things around the top here. We're, we're, we're going to end up doing that later. Uh, it'll make it look like some railing. So it'll be like those uh, telescope bits that you ended up using uh, for the boardwalk bit. So I'll, I'll put some of those up there. I got sand green ones, which will look like, uh, um, you know, tainted copper. It'll look, you know, like stuff's been oxidizing a little bit. It should work okay. And so like that being said, I might go sand green for any other trim that I do on this, because it'll look oxidized. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and go with that. Okay. 
Now, to build this up and make this secure here at the tail, that is not the correct term. The stern, yes, the stern. Okay, if I do this, clip that in there, let's see. All right, so that's that's giving us a little bit more elevation for another platform, which for sure we're going to go another platform. Mostly just because I have all these little angle bits, and I really want to use them up. I don't want to try and make another big brown tree. I'm just I'm over brown trees. And I don't no, I don't have that. Okay. And I'm low on plates again, and I need to cover that large area. My sixes just ain't gonna cut it. you go through that drawer and you're looking for plates and then you can't see any plates you go in there looking for something else and then you see all the plates go in there looking for bricks you can't find a brick no find another brick okay it's just the way things happen man that's not gonna work good there but I did come up with these longer <laughs> these longer plates let's see get that there it's here on the front Coral, for sure coral. Uh, there's actually coral in this box, ready to go, and I got coral right here as well. Coral. I uh, got a couple of boxes. Uh, they'll be on deck, looking all, all empty, and already hit up. I got the scroll bits that I want to put on here for a little detail. In a couple places. I mean, you won't be able to see it just right on camera, but when you get close, it's, it's going to look all right. Um, okay. If I do this, that'll use up those. And get that out of the way. So I'm not afraid of being a little bit more ornate with this, even though it's not really going to get seen too much. Um, but we'll see how it goes. All right. And the battle cry of coral went out across the land. And everybody in Tricky Brick Town knew that it was time to do battle. For the honor of coral and the preservation of the Lego system. That's not very strong, but we'll get there. Let's do is we'll set the plates. Have the thing go off that side. There we go. <sighs> I wish I had more brick. I really do. Like that is the one thing I'm really missing out a lot of. Just like brick, 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 brick. And I mean, as soon as I get it, it goes into something. So it's not like I don't have a brick. It's like, as soon as I acquire the brick, the brick is processed into something else. Um, that's just, that's just the way of it. That's the cycle. And then when I break down something, all that brick is free again. And then, you know, just fun times. I got some barrels, some barrels on top. Another brick. There's that that I was looking for. A couple ladders. Okay. All right, so we got that. That we're gonna put it in kilter. We got this coming up here. We've got, and I know I saw this one. 
Could use another one. For now, this will work. So we're just going to have a little ladder going back here. Sorted bricks. Yeah, sorted, sorted is a loose term. <laughs> Yo, know, if I if I if I if I could, Alexander, I, I surely would. But the problem is, like, I got no place to put it if I do get it because there's just no place to put anything at the moment. Like, I, I gotta. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this is to try and use up a lot of the elements that I have, so I can bring in some fresh stuff. Um, and wouldn't you know it? I'm trying to get more of those huge green base plates, uh, the sports plates. You know, the ones I'm talking about. They're like four four plates thick and they have that dimple in the center <laughs> i finally found out a good uh, found a good use for them so now i like need more <laughs> it's insane right. let's see if i do this yeah. okay that that does work a little bit if there's a way i could secure that I'll make it a little bit stronger. No. Shucks. All right. Take one of these palisades from there, right there. Yeah, I, I do enjoy sorting bricks uh, quite a bit. My method, I got my method down pat, yo. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 when I do it, it's basically working, you know, big to small. So, starting off, getting your bricks out of there. Boom. Bricks and slopes. Bricks and slopes are in the first removal category. So they all go out of there together, regardless of color. Uh, then we're talking plates and we actually kind of do this concurrently. So bricks, slopes, one big pile, big plates, one big pile. So you're, you're talking your big stuff. You're your four by four or larger or two by four or longer plates. And they, they kind of, that's, so that's, you get your big stuff out of the way. And then you get your big unwieldy stuff in one section, your wheels in another, just to kind of clear things up. And you're working all this stuff at once. Uh, it's a joy. It's an absolute joy. And then once you work all the big stuff out of the way and you got, you're down to just your, your smaller bits, that's when you kind of just go ahead and sort right there into smaller, like little units. And then I miss it. I miss it. I might, I might, I might, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get a car and then I'm going to take a road trip and then I'm going to take you up on that. Yeah. The evolution of sorting at, at first, it was so easy, right? When there, when there were fewer elements, you were younger and you didn't have as many sets and you had more places to put things. Yeah. Um, but then as time goes on, your collection grows. It just becomes tougher and tougher. That's why I have the city behind me because it's absorbed a lot of the stuff that I get in, uh, which is which has made like the actionable bits that I use kind of small and compact still, so I can just like get everything pretty much within reach. Um, I'm trying to avoid getting to the point where I need like huge, massive setups just to hold like my loose brick. Uh, Zippies, yeah, yeah. I, I I I when I get to Ziploc point, that's when I know I need to use up a lot of that stuff because I don't like to have the Ziplocs for some reason. I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I just don't have the room for the Ziplocs because once you start zipping, you're zipping, man. <laughs> Especially if you're getting like two or 300 of like red one by twos and stuff like that. And you just like, all right. Yeah, I could, I could go off on sorting tangents all day. So one of the reasons I don't go to sort lug Plastic, you can't see stuff. True, true. Um, I use the pick-a-brick cups, um, but that's when I usually have things color sorted at that point or element sorted. So, like, I have one cup right now that's all two-by-two two jumpers in white and dark tan. And easy to see, you know, I mean, I can't see everything that's in there, but I can see the colors mostly in a lot of the shapes. So, um, so that, it, works, it works pretty good for me. And then I have my uh, clear sorting containers that... They're not sorting containers, but containers in which things are sorted. Yeah, yeah it does fit. It, I, I, I get the foggy bit, for sure. All right. <laughs> what was I looking for? I need some plate action. I 
got some dark brown too that I can begin using. And then let's see. I got that. I could probably make that work. We're gonna try and make this work. Okay, so one of, one of the most annoying pieces in all of Lego to me um, are these, because <laughs> they I mean they work great when you need them. Like when when there's when there's a thing you have to have these for, and you need that bit to get that angle. Nothing else is gonna work for you. But the rest of the time, where are you gonna use this? You can't really use this because it's just it's 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 tough. I mean you gotta you gotta do a lot of improvising to get this this worked in there. Tuscan has returned. What's going on, dog? Back in the house. Yeah, so we, we're, 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 we're getting a little bit further along here, yo. Um, just kind of compromising with pieces that I have versus the pieces that I need to do certain things on here. So just making a little leap here and there. But yeah, you can see we're, we're, we're going pretty good on this uh, pirate ship. Okay, barring lavender, uh, because there is lavender but I don't have like backup smaller bits of lavender that I can use as plates. Thinking dark gray is probably going to be the route that I'm going to have to go because it blends pretty well with your reddish brown. Like tone wise, it's yeah, it's right there. And because I have those containers like that, they have the snaps on them. I always snap them now because when you don't, I mean, it only takes one time. Like you get 300 times not snapping it. That one time you don't snap it and like the thing tumbles, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. It is. It's just, just. Okay. Let's see this. I'm doing some weird, we got some weird jumps and connections here, but I think it's going to pay off. Three long. Don't have three. Oh, got that. Got that. Yeesh. Back to the drawer again. Get that out. Of So things like this tell me, you know, that, or these are the moments when I tell myself, you should have known some of this stuff. You should have known better. But then I don't because I know I'm not going to. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Wait a minute. Some tile action here. There we go. All right, got some curved tiles. We're gonna put those up around the back to make it look like a, bit, a little bit of a railing. I'm okay with this being incomplete in the front because you know it's decrepit. Um, yeah, so we got that. Didn't really find much along the lines of plates that I was looking for in there. Uh, certainly nothing to solve my current crisis. But we're going here to Plate Central. Some dark ones there. Oh, I got a one by three brown. There's another one by three brown in there. Then we're gonna be good, I think. I think. If I, if I can find it, yeah, there we go. All right, so doing that and this. Please don't fall apart. Please don't fall apart. Okay. There. Oh, I'll repeat the same thing on the other side, and I need to bounce that up two plates. You know what? If I'm going to do that, I'm just going to.
And this is one of the things I have to keep reminding myself. Like it's it's decrepit. You don't have to do. Uh, um, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. It really doesn't have to be symmetrical. Doing a uh, runway for your mock, eh? Nice. That's a, that's a lot of base plates. Well, de depending, depending. If you got something that's VTOL, that's you're you're gonna be all right. All right, so yeah, yeah. Look at that. We're we're kind of kind of a little bit securedish. Do that. Move this here. Yeah, there we go. Right on. Hydrate. Oh, that's tasty. All right. And I'm going to get these little curvy bits out of the way right now. I might end up doing something else down here in the water area with them, but for now, they're too much. Or I just might make a tree. I, I, could, be, I could do a tree. Right. There we go. A little barrel. On there. We are going to Oh, come on, cooperate thing. We're getting so close. So close. Like that. Oh yeah, that's right. I got the axle in here. The do this. There we go. That's a little bit more correct. And let's see. One of the funny things about this is seeing like what on the ship held together after all these years and what is like disintegrated beyond recognition. I think that's fun. Ah, there we go. Now we got our stairs going down there. I think that's pretty cool. I think we're looking all right. <laughs> now I'm trying to force myself to use uh, the little A-frame bits here. Oh, was it that was it the underwater challenge when the squeaky squad was born? Oh, the underwater challenge. I actually missed watching that day uh, because I remember very well. I was at the uh, I had to go to the dentist. I was sitting outside waiting to go into the dentist. I had a couple minutes, so I tuned in real quick. And just like right when I tuned in, um, Flynn was doing my little thing and he was trying to do it like because it was uh, it was life aquatic. And I had him trying to do the Willem Dafoe German accent from Life Aquatic. And that's when the whole German accent thing started, for better or worse. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, what, what, a, what a time to be alive. There's no good way that's going to go in there. Okay. But, yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was a very fun stream. I caught, I caught the thing. Uh, I, I went back and watched the rest of it after I got out of the appointment. But it just seems like that's when I can get a good time at my dentist's office is on Fridays. So not a good time at the dentist's office is I don't think there's really such a thing as a good time at the dentist's office, but like as far as time slots go and appointments, that's that's what I'm talking about. It's up at 4 a.m. the night before the deadline, trying to make something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, late night builds, yo. Those those last minute uh, submissions. Like some now, if it gets to the point where it's you know going to be a last minute thing, sometimes I might not even, and I'll just be like, all right, I'm just going to mulligan this and then get in on the next challenge because that's probably going to be a little bit better. Probably probably <laughs> come out a little bit better for me just because sometimes when I try and you know hack something together last minute. Um, it's a fail. It's a big fail. But that's, that's, I mean, that's just me. Like some people can do it. 
And on occasion, I've been able to, you know, surprise myself with some last minute jive stuff. But for the most part, of course, I'm going to want uh, a little bit of time, a little bit of a heads up to try and work it. Yep, I just said work it. Right. <laughs> Brain is leaking down your spine. <laughs> yes. I can't say that I uh, I don't identify with that because I uh, I've been there. Man, I'm I'm just going to town on this little back half here. I don't know if you can see it too well up top. Use a little lavender plate to kind of show it a little bit of the distance or uh, distance. See, my words are failing me now. This this is when I know we're getting close to the end of the stream. <laughs> the distance. I uh, try and show some contrast behind here so you can so you can see a little bit of what's happening there. It's, it's pretty decrepit, but at one time it was extremely ornate um, and probably larger than it had to be. So that's where I'm going with that. Um, and we're, we're getting a, a much diminished pile of brick happening, which is good. Because that means... Exactly what that means. And you are just going to not want to go anywhere and look great, I don't think. Let's try you there. So, yeah, we're, we're jazzing now. We're, we're, we're doing full-on modal jazz. If I put those there, that's maybe this. Let's look from that direction. Do I ever incorporate the challenges into my city? Uh, yeah, no worries, Brooke. needs to be right back. Um, there are a couple challenge builds that I've had that I've really, really liked, that I've, I've kept around. Um, probably the oldest challenge build that I still have is my Diane Keaton mech. Um, so la-di-da, the Diane Keaton mech I did way back in the day uh, is still surviving in the uh, space mech area of the city. But... Um, as far as like the the challenge builds, like if I do any landscape or something like that, or make, make a little scene, pretty much that doesn't that doesn't survive. Um, mostly because as soon as that's done and the pictures are taken, I break it down so I get the room back. That means exactly what that means. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it's it's quotable for sure. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. There, right, that's going to secure this bit just a, a little bit more. Can do something like this down here. Be a little bit more off. Like that. And then maybe something like this around the end. Yeah, the blue holler cu cube is, is sweet. Yeah, holler cube. It was holler. Um, yeah, you can't tell I grew up in Florida. Uh, yeah, so so the holler cube, it was awesome. And like it, it looks like an art installation piece. So you could use it anywhere and be great. Like minifigs can interact with it, like different scales for it. Or it could even be like something sitting on the uh, coffee table. That's how cool it was. That, I remember that cube quite well. It's just so perfectly finished and so perfectly proportioned. I was just like, oh, my God. All right, there we go. And because Lavender Lug, because Lavender Love, we're putting the Lavender Chest here on deck. Yeah, right there up in front. And then <laughs> this little piece here just to make everything look a little bit more decrepit. Um, all right, we're going to plug in a couple of, uh, bits that might've fallen overboard here or little bits that have disintegrated funky and fallen off, you know, you know how that kind of thing goes there. 
Yeah, yeah. Trying to get the right angle on that. Shoot. Had had to be tough to take a good picture. Um, even after you get everything like sorted out to make it just perfectly proportional. Okay. And we're just plugging and playing. All right. We got a pirate ship. Uh, we got it. We have a sunken pirate ship done in the time allotted. Do I have a brown axle? I do have a brown axle. Or even maybe a black axle. Let's come out the top of that. Here. Extend that uh, mast a little bit. Don't have any more pirate flags. Um, they're all in use on that ship. I do have a cone. Do we have a cone over here? Seems like I've seen a sand green cone in the last couple minutes. Oh, barring that, I'm going to use a brown cone. Brown cone, there on top. There we go. And then bar. Bar to extend the top a little bit more. And then if there was a flag down here, of course you wouldn't be able to read anything on it because it'd be bleached out. So we're gonna see what we got as far as like plain flags. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good. Oh, no, 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 that won't be quite right. Cause you gotta think about like um, the flag underwater, uh, it's not exactly gonna be billowing in the wind. It's going to be just more kind of droopy and flowy, just kind of hanging there like a dead limb almost, just a little bit with the currents. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm overthinking this just a hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna forego the uh, flag until I figure out a good solution for it. So I think there's a different material somewhere that I can use for it that'll work pretty well. Uh, but I just haven't made uh, I haven't made that connection upstairs yet, so I can't make that connection here. Um, yeah, so yeah, we got that going on. I could put a little bit of chain up on top. I'll make it look like something was going on there, and gives the impression that there used to be some rigging once upon a time before uh, oxidation, oxidation, oxidization set in. All right, and just to secure things a little bit, we're gonna throw around some uh, lavender plates, just to add some security and you know, give us a little bit of color field action. I mean, this this could all change very soon. Thanks, Brickinista. Yeah, I did a little bit of work on the uh, upper part of the mast here above the crow's nest. Um, I was gonna put a flag, still not um, sure how the best way to do that would be. Uh, because underwater flags behave differently than flags that are dry and in the wind. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure something out for that. But what do we got here for these plates? Just to, just to kind of make a lavender area here is what we're going to do. Oh, thanks, Tuscan. There we go. Now this table that I'm building on, um, this this table over here is what I usually build on because it's rock solid on top. This one right here is plastic, so it's got a little bit of a sponge to it when you really press down, especially with plates. So, <sighs> so there's that. But I mean, you do what you can do, right? Right. Or lavender. Okay. So yeah, we got. Uh, we got a lavender area here up front that's just going to differentiate things a little bit, you know, for the eye when you go across it. And I'm looking on here, and the screen might look a little bit more bleached than the lavender actually is, not showing its true, true color potential. But that's all right. Lavender's always getting, lavender's always getting the short end of the stick, and we love lavender here. I have a little lavender bit coming right out from the ship. There. Okay. I'm 
we'll just set that there for now. So yeah, we're we're going pretty good. And then I've got uh, I've accumulated all my free and loose tan tiles uh, that are two by six or larger. I think I'm pretty much just down to two by sixes. <laughs> Turn it back to lavender. All right. There we go. So I'm just going to throw a couple of these on the base plates just to make it a little bit more sturdy. I mean, I'm going to be keeping this on the, uh, the table until it's pretty much finished and ready to go down there. Uh, but this is just so that, you know, say Nora takes a running jump at the table, right? Because she takes running jumps at tables. She will run, jump, and then jump on here and then slide. So I've got to clear everything off there um, because she's, she's athletic and it's Olympic season and, you know, she gets the fever just like everybody else does. One of the things I'm going to have to do, though, was once I get these seams on here, it's going to have to blend it a little bit around because you don't want just like straight lines. I mean, it, it just looks really obvious where your seams are. So I'm going to try and blend them a little bit. See how that works. OK. So, yeah, just running these out. Maybe I'll make it a little thicker at the end, so extra Nora. Hey, guess what? Monica's back. What's up? I can't I can't see guess what without guessing what. What? <laughs> oh. oh, that's that's classic. That's classic. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I don't laugh at you. I laugh at the situation because I've been in very similar situations. Actually, I, I was, I'm not going to go into it, but a similar thing happened not too long ago for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, Joel, I think we, we got, the, um, we got we got clear skies right now because I, I got some decent sunlight coming in, so I'm going to be mowing here because Monica Monica is a little bit south for me, but she's been getting all the rain that we've been getting just a little bit sooner. It's all just been traveling up this way, so yeah, I, uh, I've been getting a whole lot of water up there. But today it's dry, and it's extremely muggy out there, and I have to go mow my lawn. There just ain't, ain't no two ways about it. It's got to be done. And I do enjoy mowing my lawn. It's like my zen moment. It's like when I can go out there, just, you know, empty my mind, worry about tall fescue and rye and Kentucky bluegrass and why the hell somebody's planted zoysia in my yard and things like that. You know, Misty raining. Misty raining is my favorite. I do enjoy the rain quite a bit, but... I was getting a little fed up this week. All right, I'm just gonna extend this just a little bit to break up that line because it's 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 <laughs> it's pretty uniform. I'll tell you that. Yeah, we got sun out, so I'm looking forward to uh, getting that yard work done. And I'm I'm fighting moles right now. Um, I bought a mole trap. I did. I, I I tried like everything else so far, and now I just have like a vicious jaws of life, grab and kill mole machine. Because they they just don't stop. My moles are insane right now. Yeah, I know my grass for sure, dog. Yeah. Yeah, my uh. My grass and I have have a relationship and we're kind of on the outs right now because like I have all this, I've got a lot of weed action that's happening out there. I, I'm not, for the longest time I didn't want to spray for anything, you know, or, you know, do, do too much chemically to my lawn. Um, and the weeds have taken over because I live across the street from like a, an abandoned golf course that's turned into a meadow. So it's like Dandelion City and weeds galore over there. And then, you know, all the seeds just migrate across here with the wind. And yeah, so, 
So yeah, I got some serious work to do. I'm going to be doing some overseeding this fall. Uh, I've been watching a lot of lawn care videos on YouTube. Uh, if you're into lawn care and you want to check out a couple people, uh, Ryan Nor Lawn Care. <laughs> I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm giving these dudes shout outs. And uh, uh, Alan Hain, uh, Lawn Care Nut. They're, 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 they're fun ones to watch. If, if you're into the whole, you know, turf agriculture thing, turf horticulture thing, not agriculture. I mean, yeah. But uh, yeah, if, 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 if you're into that kind of stuff, like those guys are fun to watch. All right, so let's see. Moles, moles are cute. Moles are cute, but they're they're masked. They're they're not cool. <laughs> they're cute, but they're not cool. I'll say it like that, man. I almost I almost succeeded the PG thirteen. Um, yeah, castor beans. I I did um, the fake worm thing. I did uh, uh, sonic deterrence. You know where you where you put that post in the ground, and apparently, like it, it's a, some frequency that they don't like, and then they clear out. I also tried the uh, um, dried blood thing because, like, you can buy dried blood, put it on the ground, and they don't like it. It it gets in there and they're out. The only thing I didn't try is mothballs. Now I hear mothballs are pretty successful with mo with moles, but. I really hate mothballs, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so castor beans, yeah. I mean, I'll, I might check it into. I might check into it. We'll we'll see. But yeah, so um, that's definitely time. But yeah, we got a we got a pirate ship. We got we got the beginnings of the underwater area going on here. So everything is is pretty much going to revolve around this. Uh, we're gonna. I'll figure out a good place to put the sandbar, which. You know, it's actually right here, right here at the bow of the uh, bow of the ship. Yeah, and then we're just gonna kind of um, next time we're just gonna layer up some foliage and whatnot. And uh, any anybody who would like to be around for that and help me out, please, because like this, this this is gonna be the tough part for me. Like sunken pirate ship, not too bad, um, but the like the ages, er, the layers of age and. Uh, Plankton, and, uh, coral, barnacle, everything that's come down here and, you know, done stuff to this, this ship. Um, I'm going to need help and suggestions across the board. So any, anybody who wants to turn in blood meal, that's the stuff. Um, so anybody who wants to turn in next week, please do. Because uh, we're going to be back at the pirate ship because this is, this is actually exciting and fun. And I want to see how much I can do, like, two-hour spurts at a time on this thing. And just instead of, like obsessing over it for like two weeks of constantly building it and, you know, editing ed this in, this out, and then just like not coming up with anything good. So I think it's looking good. And thank you all for your suggestions so much. Um, I am going to do a little bit more around the crow's nest here just to accentuate it a little bit, make it stand out, but we're, we're going to, we're going to work on that. Um, yeah. Live trap, live traps aren't going to, aren't going to do it for as many moles as I have. Like I'm just going to be out there constantly with them. But I mean, I set the mole trap three days ago. I still haven't caught anything. So I'm still, I'm still, I'm still on the good uh, side of good apparently right now. Um, Yoda's house colors. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is, that is pretty nice. Yoda's, Yoda's swampy house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the, uh, I think it looks good. I, I think it looks good too. Um, all that jazz. Yeah, there's a whole lot of jazz going on here because we're, we're going to get uh, real close here for a second because I want to show you. Dark tan. Let's dark tan. That's, yeah, so coming in a little bit closer here. Just take a quick look. Uh, and you can see like what the jazz is. Jazz is when I just start randomly placing things just to see how it works against. Uh, another shape or color or anything in that area just you know try and try and figure out what the you know the dialogue between them are you know spatially is uh, Apollo studs I, I, I figure I, I like apple studs apple studs is a great term I, I prefer that actually so yeah um, that's that's where we're at that's what we got going on here and just you know it looks just decrepit and disheveled and under the water but you can see at one point it was actually a pretty pretty fine little ride um, so yeah, and then we got the lavender going there, of course. So good times, good times. And yeah, so that's that's for this week. Oh, I can't believe it's over already. Now I gotta go do other things. 
Um, but yeah, so thank you everybody for tuning in and checking things out and uh, come back again next Monday. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be here uh, moving on to other parts of this, working on the water stuff and the foliage and the fawnage or, you know, the underwater sea life, stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, once we get that layer in, then it's like the, the subs and the other bigger things that are floating around here. So like the sharks and the squids, because we got, we got a lot of squid action going on. So yeah. And then uh, like, if you guys think of anything later, go ahead and throw it in the comments, you know, so I can see it. And then we'll, we'll have that for next week because the comments are there for you and I, and, um, like it's where you can express yourself and it's also where I can see how you feel about certain things and like uh, different suggestions and whatnot. I mean, I don't usually leave comments on stuff because I'm pretty good, you know, with, with what I see. And then I just, you know, don't even think about it. But like, if you, if you see something, throw a comment down there. If, if you got a good idea for it, throw a comment in there. I like to see comments. I just, I just do. That's, I don't know. I don't know. You're right. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, didn't talk about Lego Master Season 2 much this week because this is a heartbreaker of an episode. So I just uh, taken a hiatus on that for a little bit. But yeah, tune in next week. We'll, we'll give all the dish on the latest episode for tomorrow night. Uh, and tune in to Yano and uh, Remy's uh, recap episode, which is on uh, Remy Baker's uh, channel there. Um, Brick Literacy. So yeah, check them out on YouTube. Uh, fellow uh, Tricky Lug member, and then uh, Yano is also in Tricky Lug too. Uh, Yano did all the animations for the Tricky Lug, so good, good times for the Tricky Brick Show. Um, yeah, and then uh, the new Rebrick This, Rebrick This hashtag at July 21 uh, is going to be the bride or the groom brick headset, or both if you really want to. It's like, I ain't going to stop you. I, I ain't going to stop you. So, yeah, get those great parts packs, bride especially with curved, uh, curved slopes all day. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for, for, for stopping in. I love you all so much. This is, this is just such a good time. Uh, and such a, such a good crew of folks that, that hang out here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, check back more time, more time, more fun. I'm losing my words. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to remember everything that's going on so I can just shout it out real quick. One more last thing, uh, this Saturday at uh, 1 PM my time, Eastern, uh, 4 PM. Is that right? 1 PM my time. Uh, going to be doing a build on, uh, like a, a build off on Brick and East's channel. So tune into that. Uh, there'll, there'll be more information on that coming, uh, forthcoming. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, there we go. Yeah. Mock improv. It's, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be Looney Tunes, uh, eccentric wild build stuff. Like you have 90 minutes, uh, they choose premise, they choose location and you have to work within the Looney Tunes, uh, CMF series for your characters. And then come up with with something in ninety minutes, and then after the ninety minutes, we're all going to show what we got. So it'll be it'll be fun. Tune in. Uh, thanks. See y'all later. I got to stop talking. I get on a roll. I just can't be stopped. Just. <laughs>